Carl Edwards was a fan favorite throughout the early 2000s, all the way up to 2016, his final cup season, where he infamously retired after coming eight laps short of his first championship. However, this wasn't the first time he was close to winning a championship, nor the first time a single moment defined his fate. Today, we're going to take a brief look through Edwards' career and how if just a few things went differently, he could have been looked at as one of the best drivers of the modern era. Right before this video starts, make sure you leave a like and subscribe for more. Carl Edwards was born on August 15, 1979 in Columbia, Missouri. He was born into the racing world as his father, Carl Sr., raced USAC midgets and modified stock cars for four decades. It didn't take long for Carl Jr. to jump into racing himself, competing in his first mini sprints at age 13. In 1995 and 1996, he won a combined 14 races at various tracks in Missouri and Illinois. He continued working his way up the ladder, switching to IMCA Modifieds on dirt in 1997. In 99, he won Capital Motor Speedway's track championship, which is a NASCAR sanctioned track. This got him on the radar for NASCAR teams and he eventually got the call from Mike Mittler to compete in seven races in the 2002 Craftsman Truck Series for MB Motorsports. This was clearly not great equipment, and nothing seemed out of the ordinary in his first two career starts where he finished well outside the top 20, but it all came together at Kansas. Edwards was able to wheel his truck to an 8th place finish, MB Motorsports first top 10 as an organization in 68 tries, and it didn't even come on a plate track. He had a couple of top 20s in his next four starts, but nothing too crazy. However, he got the call up from Jack Roush to race full-time in the truck series for 2003. After recording only one top 10 in the first six races, Edwards went on a tear, scoring eight top fives in nine races, including wins at Kentucky, IRP, and Gateway. He finished the season with three wins and got signed on for another year in the truck series for 2004, but also planned to run a part-time schedule in the Cup Series. Edwards quickly showed what he was made of, scoring top 10s in three of his first four races and finished the year with five top fives in 13 races. He also managed three wins in the Truck Series that season, and these performances were enough for Roush to move Carl full-time in the Bush Series in 2005. And not only was he going to race full-time in the Bush Series, but also full-time in the Cup Series. A rookie into both at the same time, definitely something we will probably never see again. Edwards was putting together solid runs in both divisions early in the season until history was made at Atlanta. In the Bush race, Carl beat out the likes of Tony Stewart, Jimmy Johnson, and Matt Kenseth for his first career win in the Bush series. The very next day, Edwards beat out Johnson in this crazy finish for his first Cup Series win. As the year went on, Edwards won in both series, including five Bush races by end of the year. His Cup season was going as great as he could have dreamt, working his way up to fourth in the regular season standings at one point, but eventually fell back to eighth by the time of the chase. He started the chase eighth in the standings. Through the first five races of the chase, Carl looked like a real championship threat. After Charlotte, Edwards was 6th in the standings, only 54 points out of points leader Tony Stewart. Remember, this was at a time where the winner could score 185 points a race, so this wasn't much of a deficit. Then Martinsville happened. All of the Roush cars struggled in qualifying, just as they had done at Martinsville in the spring. Edwards was starting 18th. This fell in line with Edwards' season, as he hadn't recorded a top 10 all season at a short track, despite having so much success. All he had to do was have an okay day, but this didn't happen. After running right around 15th all day, Carl's team tried something different on a caution on lap 123. He decided to stay out while most of the leaders pitted and was able to get track position in the top 10 for the first time all day. He restarted 5th, but lost it nearly as fast as he got it. He was hung out to dry on the outside lane, and fell back to ninth quickly. By lap 183, he was back outside the top 20 after being forced to pit off schedule. 
He ran outside the top 20 the rest of the day, even going a lap down on lap 418. He would finish the race a lap down in 26th place on pure speed. Remember how he was 54 points out of the lead coming in? Well, thanks to Stewart's second place run, Edwards fell to 149 points behind. He would not give up yet and won the next two races at Atlanta and Texas, then finished 6th at Phoenix and rounded off the season 4th in Homestead. He finished level on points with teammate Greg Biffle in the standings, but lost the tiebreaker because Biffle had two more wins. The difference from Edwards to Stewart in the final standings? 35. If Edwards' team decided to just have an average day at Martinsville and decided not to go off sequence to the leaders, he would have finished around 15th. A 15th place finish at Martinsville would have earned him 38 more points than his 26th place finish, which would have given him the championship by 3 points. This is of course assuming that everything else happened the exact same, but it's still fun to think about. Edwards' sophomore slump was real in 2006 and didn't take home a single win or even make the chase despite 20 top 10 finishes. He came back around in 2007 with 3 wins and made the chase, but was pretty consistent. This takes us to 2008 when everything clicked for Edwards. He won the second and third races of the season at Fontana and Las Vegas, then a few weeks later won at Texas. However, after his Las Vegas win, he failed post-race inspection and was docked 100 driver points and 10 bonus points for the chase. This wouldn't affect Carl too much as he continued to show up week after week. He picked up three more wins by end of the year and was the championship favorite for many. The chase came around and Carl was as consistent as could be, finishing third, third, and second in the first three races. That was until Talladega. Edwards was pushing teammate Greg Biffle to the lead, but gave him a bad bump, leading to this big one. While Edwards finished 26th, Jimmy Johnson finished 9th, a 62-point swing. It is harsh to say that he lost the championship because of a crash at Talladega, with it being his fault, so let's take a look at this next race at Charlotte. Edwards was running in the top three early in the race after starting third. He wasn't leading laps, but he stayed there in the early parts of the race. On lap 52, while Edwards was catching Jimmy Johnson for the lead, he reported a vibration. His crew chief Bob Osborne called him to pit road, and they brought him in under green. The next lap, AJ Allmendinger brought out the caution, and Edwards' crew believed he was the first car lap down, but he wasn't, so this led to a huge argument with NASCAR officials. While the broadcast was covering this, Carl started to look desperate in the cockpit. He was able to regain power, but had no ignition. His crew worked on the issue on pit road. Seven laps after the restart, he was still sitting on pit road and eventually fell 17 laps down. He finished 33rd, while Johnson finished 6th. Edwards went on a tear to end the season, picking up three wins in the last five races, but ultimately lost the championship by 62 points. Considering Carl had a top three car at Charlotte, he could have easily had a top five. Finishing 5th place would have cleared Carl over Johnson by 22 points, winning the championship. Even if Edwards fell a 10th in that race, he would have beat Johnson by 5 points in the 2008 championship. Carl's performance dropped off in 2009 and 2010, as did the Roush organization as a whole. In these two years, Roush scored only 7 wins, down from 11 in 2008 and 7 in 2007. However, Carl was pure consistency in 2011, and that put him in the championship fight. He started the 2011 season with three top twos in the first four races, including a win at Las Vegas. He wouldn't score a win the rest of the regular season, but held the regular season's point lead until just a couple races before the chase. Then we all know the story of the chase in 2011. Tony Stewart, who had been irrelevant most of the season and barely snuck into the chase, won five of the last ten races of the season, but ran into a fair bit of issues along the way. Not Carl, who had a worst finish of 11th in the chase and scored seven top fives. It all came down to the championship race, where Carl led Stewart by three points. Edwards sat on the pole, but faded late in the race, which allowed Stewart to win and Edwards finished second. 
the two actually tied in points, and this led to a tiebreaker determined by wins, which gave the edge to Stewart. This one is pretty easy to determine how he could have won the championship. A single position higher in any chase race would have given him the trophy. I think back to Martinsville, where he sat on the pole but finished ninth. Where did the speed go? They didn't run into any issues, they just didn't have the race pace and finished ninth. Now we get to 2016. Edwards had his best form in years to start the season. After nine races, he had two wins and finished seventh and higher in all but one race. He led the standings and stayed top five in points most of the regular season. Despite inconsistency, he fought his way into the round of eight. In the first race of the round of eight in Martinsville, Edwards had a late crash that forced him over 20 laps down and eventually finished 36th. He rebounded with an impressive win at Texas, which was a rain-shortened race. This locked him into the final four at Homestead, a track where he had won twice. The race itself was dominated by non-final four drivers like Kyle Larson and Kevin Harvick. With less than 30 laps to go, Kyle Busch in second was leading the final four drivers and had Carl Edwards right behind him. They battled for several laps, but with 25 to go, he finally made his way past Busch, putting himself into position to win the championship. He did not completely drive away from Kyle, but stayed consistently about three quarters of a second in front of Busch as the laps winded down. With 15 laps to go, NASCAR threw a caution for Dylan Lupton. Lupton had a flat tire, but was making his way back to the pits and left no debris, nor did he spin out. Very suspicious. They restarted with just a handful of laps to go, and then this happened. It's on the inside, green flag back in the air, they're blocking, good going down low, Carl Edwards into the wall, he got tagged by the 22, big hits by the 19, and the caution comes back out again. That is exactly what we saw Joy Logano was going to try to do. Big fire of the 78. Carl was forced to block Logano after a great restart, and neither driver was going to lift. Edwards was completely out of contention after this wreck, and likely would have won the championship without a dumb, needless caution from NASCAR. This was of course his last race, so we never got to see Carl Edwards hoist the championship trophy in the Cup Series. Carl Edwards was an amazing driver, and when he had the equipment, he was a championship contender. It's amazing how if these four circumstances ended a little differently, we would be talking about a four-time Cup Series champion, Carl Edwards. Not to mention, he may have continued racing for five more seasons and could have picked up another. You could make this case for many other drivers, so if you like this idea, I may turn it into a series. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. Hope you did enjoy. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.